Hello friends. So, in the previous lecture, we have discussed regarding the features of digital overcurrent relay and then we have discussed that coordination between the relays in distribution network is carried out and when we carry out this uh, coordination among the relays, then we need to determine the three important parameters. The first is the primary relay and backup relay pairs. So, primary relays are known as PRI, whereas the backup relays are known as the relay backup, so RBU. So, this one we need to determine. Then we need to determine the time dial setting of the relay and third thing we need to determine that is the plug setting of the overcurrent relay. After determination of this thing, we have discussed that if we need to determine these three settings, then manual calculation is not possible. The reason behind uh, this is that whatever network we are considering, that network may be radial distribution network fed from may be multiple ends or two ends. It can be multi network system, it can be multi network multi source system or it can be ring main system. So, when such type of different structure of the distribution networks are available, then and when the number of relays in this structures or networks are also large uh, along with the number of uh, distribution feeders then manual calculations are not possible and in that case we have to go for some algorithm for which we have to write the code in the some language and output of that code will give you these three settings. The first is the primary and backup relay pairs that is PRI and RBU, second is the time dial setting and the third is the pickup or plug setting of the relay. So, whatever link net structure we will see that will give you the first part only that is the primary and backup relay pairs. The remaining two settings that is time dial settings and the pickup value and plug setting that will be calculated based on some other uh, parameters also like we need to carry out load flow studies and short circuit studies because load flow studies are used to establish initial condition in a particular network and second the short circuit studies are utilized for the calculation of time dial settings whereas plug settings are calculated based on the full load current of the feeder with some percentage of overload. So, with this background let us see how the link net structure works. So, the first task of any relay coordination process is to store the network information optimally in computer memory. So, link net structure is used to store the topology of a particular uh, distribution network such that uh, we can store that values optimally in the computer and using that we can process it and we can calculate the primary and backup relay pairs and those primary backup relay pairs can be further used for the calculation of plug setting and time dial settings. Now, when we consider the coordination among the relays, the relay numbers are given by link net structure. So, when we use the link net structure, relay numbers are given by link net structure whereas, bus number are assigned by the user. So, we have to enter or we have to give the bus number and based on that the relay numbers are assigned by the link net structure itself. So, let us see how the link net structure works. So, link net structure contains two flow chart, two algorithms. The first algorithm is related to the calculation of few variables or parameters and second algorithm that is related to the determination of primary relays and calculation of backup relay pairs. So, which relay will pro provide backup and which is the primary relay that will be taken care by second algorithm. So, let us see these two algorithms step by step. So, if we consider let us say one network. So, you can see here I have shown you a network which contains three buses, bus number 1, bus number 2 and bus number 3 are there and here you can see between bus 1 and 2, two branches or two distribution feeders are connected which is numbered as let us say the this as a one branch 
and this as a second branch. So, branch 1 and branch 2 are connected between bus 1 and bus 2. So, basically this branch 1 and 2 are parallel feeders. Then between bus 1 and bus 3, the another branch that is denoted by 3 that is also connected and the fourth branch that is also connected between bus 2 and bus 3. So, you can see that in each branch I have connected or I have shown two relays one is the relay R 1 and another is the relay R 2 uh, this is R 2. So, similarly you can see that you have relay R 3 and relay R 4 for second branch you have relay R 5 and relay R 6 for the third branch and you have relay R 7 and relay R 8 for the fourth branch. So, for each branch we have assigned two relays obviously, and this is true why we require two relays because if there is a fault let us say in branch number 3 at let us say F 3. So, obviously, in that case the fault current is feed like this one path and the second path is like this. So, obviously, this fault at F 3 should be detected by relay R 6 as well as relay R 5. R 6 will give signal to the circuit breaker 6 that is available in substation 1 and R 5 will give signal to the circuit breaker 5 which is available in substation 3. So, both the circuit breaker will become open and hence this fault gets disconnected. So, so that is why for each branch we need two relays and hence here you can see for four branches eight relays are shown. Now, let us see how the algorithm works. So, as I told you link net structure that is categorized by two algorithms. The first is we can call it as algorithm 1 and second we call it as the algorithm 2. So, the first algorithm here I have shown in terms of flowchart. Here in the first algorithm you need to acquire or enter some data like you need to enter the data of branches, how many branches are there. You need to enter the data of nodes that is bus. So, as I told you that relay numbers are calculated by link rate structure whereas, the bus number should be given by the user. So, node means here the bus. So, bus number you have to enter and branch also you need to enter. After entering this you need to carry out some calculations in this two portions. So, you need to calculate few things like end A and end B. You need to also calculate this uh, three things that is next, least and far variables. So, same variables are given here just by considering the node change and after this you have to see that whether you have covered or consider all the branches available in a particular network or not. So, here when I say is last branch that means for this network shown here whether I have considered or covered all the four branches or not. If all the four branches are covered or completed then link rest structure is completed if it is first branch or second branch you have to go again you have to read the branch uh, data bus data and again you need to calculate these things. So, this will be cleared when we considered one example. Now, when we consider this algorithm 1 this is my algorithm 1. So, when I consider this algorithm 1 the topological properties the in this algorithm are represented by specifying the connection between the nodes and the branches. So, whatever connection you are going to do between the node that is bus and the branches because we know that a particular branch is connected between two nodes or two bus. So, whatever connections you will give between the nodes and the branches assuming that ends of each branch are numbered by this way using these two equations then that is represented by this algorithm 1. So, when you consider the ends of a particular branch let us say I consider branch 1, 
branch 2, branch 3, branch 4. So, when I consider branch 1, then for each branch, let us say 1, 2, 3, 4, the numbering is given considering this two equations. So, these two equations you can see I have shown here in the algorithm. One is end of A and end of B, both are functions of the branch and that is calculated based on which branch you are considering, whether you are considering first branch, whether you are considering second branch like that. So, based on that you need to calculate these two uh, parameters that is end A and end B. Once you have this two parameters end A and end B, you need to calculate three one dimensional vectors and these vectors are shown here as next, least and farce. So, this next, least and farce are the three one dimensional vectors which you need to calculate in link rate structure particularly when you are dealing with algorithm one of the link rate structure. So, let us see what is the significance of these three one dimensional vectors. So, when we consider the first one let us say least, then list is nothing but it is related to the bus link. So, list node which stores uh, all the bus links and dimension of this is the number of buses of a particular network or the system. So, list node here you can see second I have shown that is nothing but your list node one dimensional vector which stores all the bus links right and the dimension of this list node is again equivalent to the number of buses in the network or in the system. The second one dimensional vector is nothing but that indicates or that is related to directional relay links. So, to store the links between the directional relays incident at a particular given bus, we have to define the one dimensional vector that is shown as next. So, here I have given this in both the stages next one dimensional vector is given next end or next end A and next end B and A and end B we have already calculated here. So, based on that you can have the value of next and this one dimensional vector indicates the directional link related to a particular or a given bus and the dimension of this next one dimensional vector is nothing but equivalent to the number of branch ends that is the number of relays available in a network or in a given system. The third one dimensional parameter is related to the remote relay links and this is defined as the far vector. So, far that is also defined here and far that is also defined here. So, this far vector is nothing but it is going to link any relay with its remote bus that is defined as a far vector. So, with this definition of this three one dimensional vectors, one is the directional relay link, one is the remote relay link and another is the bus link. Uh, this one dimensional vectors you need to calculate based on the equation or availability of and A and and B parameters. Once you have all these things, the second step you need to follow that is nothing but the determination of primary and backup relay paths. So, once you have the values of all these three one dimensional vectors and and A and and B two parameters you can have or you can calculate the primary and backup relay pairs and for that you have to use algorithm 2 for the link net structure which is given. So, we will discuss this also. So, once the link net structure is established that means, once you have determined the three one dimensional vectors along with the and A and and B parameters, the next step you need to follow is the determination of primary relays and determination of backup relays for a particular primary relay. If you want to find out primary and backup relays, you need to carry out these two studies as I told you earlier load flow studies you need to carry out to establish the initial condition for a particular or given network and short circuit studies are also required to calculate the fault MVA at particular bus. So, for each bus you need to know 
fault MBA so that you can calculate the plug setting multiplier or multiple of pickup current and based on that you can calculate the time of operation of relay and based on that you can calculate the time dial setting of the relay. Now, let us see what is the procedure to calculate the primary and backup relay pairs. So, for that we need to use the algorithm that is known as algorithm second or 2 for the link rate structure. So, whenever we wish to calculate the primary and backup relay pairs in this situation we have to use this algorithm 2 and the flow chart of this algorithm 2 is given here. You can see initially you have to start in this algorithm or in this flow chart with the relay number. Let us say I want to find out the primary relay and backup relay let us say I want to find out relay is equal to 7 suppose. So, in this case my primary relay P R i that is equal to 7 and now I need to find out the backup relay for this 7 number primary relay. So, when I consider relay a particular number then you have to decide whether that relay is even or odd. So, based on that whether you are considering this 7 which is an odd quantity you can have the value of i t which is nothing but relay plus 1. So, 7 plus 1 that is 8. So, i t value you can calculate it based on the relay number that is what relay you are considering. Once you have this value of i t that is you can obtain here then you can have the values of these 3 things one is i f l t which is based on far. So, earlier one dimensional vector i b that is also based on list earlier one dimensional vector and i s that is also based on far one dimensional vector. So, here you can have the value of i f l t value of i b and value of i s. So, you have 4 values i t, i f l t, i b and i s. Once you have these 4 values the next step is to calculate the another 2 values that is i f and i n. So, then after calculation of i t, i f l t, i b, i s, i f and i n you have the logic whether i f is equal to i s and i n is equal to 0 and i b is equal to i t. So, this is end logic, this is your end logic. So, when all the 3 values are satisfied may be whether it is true or not based on that again you have one more logic i f is equal to i s or i b is equal to i t. Once you have this you will have this box that is nothing but your r b u is equal to i b. So, whatever is the value of i b that is your backup relay for a particular primary relay. So, if here I have considered primary relay as 7 and I want to find out for this relay number 7 which relays will provide backup then in that case R B u is equal to I B whatever value of I B comes out number comes out that is my relay backup or backup relay. And this value of R B u can be more than uh, let us say uh, 1 or more may be more than 2 sometimes uh, this values are 3 also. And once you have this finally, cross check with the value of i n whether i n is 0 or not if it is uh, not 0 then again you have to assign the value of uh, i n to the value of i b. So, value of i b changes and accordingly again you need to calculate i f i n and then you have to compare and you can obtain the value of r b u and you have to stop particularly at this point where all the relays are coordinated. So, once you have considered all the relays let us say for example, 14 relays are available then you have to cover all the 14 relays you have all the primary relays as 14 relays you have the backup relays of all these 14 relays which you have considered once you have that then this algorithm will stop if it is not then again you have to increase the relay number and you have to go up to maximum let us say 14 because we have 14 relays and a particular network. If you have more relays accordingly you have to uh, 
uh, go and you have to calculate the primary relays and backup relays. Now, with this background let us see uh, some of the networks available, so that you can have an idea that how many relays are available, how many branches or link or distribution feeders are available. So, here you can see that uh, this relay has number of branches, you can see I have shown the branches like A, B, then you have C, D, E, F up to you have let us say G, H, I, J, K, L. So, this many branches are there. So, if you calculate this, then you have 12 branches are there and as this are the 12 branches and as I told you for each branch we have to use 2 relays. So, total 24 relays are available in this network and you can see relays are shown by symbol cross. So, you can see that if I consider branch A then 2 relays relay 1 and relay 2 are shown by cross like this you can see. Similarly, you have 12th branches where that is L you can see that here you have relay number 23 and relay number 24. So, these 2 relays are there. So, total 24 relays are there and for this 24 relays you need to calculate primary relays. Let us say if I consider uh, relay number let us say 15 right then for this 15 relay number let us say this is the relay I am considering. So, if I consider relay 15 then I have to calculate which relays will provide backup to this primary relay 15. Accordingly I have to consider all the relays and I have to provide the backup or I have to calculate the backup for all the primary relays because those things are required because it may possible that sometimes if there is a issue of sympathic tripping there it may possible that one relay may give nuisance trip and your feeder may unnecessarily disconnected. Similarly, if you consider this systems are not standard systems, but if you consider some IEEE uh, systems like IEEE 14 bus systems, then here you can say in IEEE 14 bus system the total relays available are 40. You can see the last relay you can shown here that is number 40 and number 39. So, total 20 branches are available and for each branch I have the 2 relays. So, total 40 relays are available in IEEE 40 bus system or network and here manual calculation of primary backup relay pairs, plug setting and time dial settings are not possible and hence we have to go for link net structure which consists of 2 algorithms, algorithm 1 for calculation of 5 parameters that is 3 1 dimensional vectors and 2 and A and and B 2 parameters and then we have to go for algorithm 2 which can be used for calculation of primary and backup relay pairs. So, this 2 flow chart as I told you this is my algorithm 1 and this is my algorithm 2 which I need to use for the calculation of primary backup relay pairs for any given interconnected network which contains let us say large number of relays and branches. So, with this background we will discuss one example and in this example I will just give you the highlights of this example. So, you can see that here uh, the figure below shows the single line diagram of a portion of power system network. So, here you can see that 4 branches are there, this is my branch number 1, branch number 2, branch number 3 and branch number 4, 4 branches are there. So, 4 distribution feeders are available in this network, uh, the sources are connected at each bus, you can see this is bus number 1, this is bus number 2, this is bus number 3 and this is bus number 4. So, 4 buses shown by square boxes these are the 4 buses right and as I told you 4 branches are there. So, for each branch we need 2 relays. So, 8 relays are available for this network and using the flow chart of link net structure that is algorithm 1 and algorithm 2 we need to find out the primary backup relay pairs 
for the given relay let us say case 1 in which I am going to assume that my primary relay P R i that is relay R 2 okay? and for this relay I want to find out which relays out of 8 relays will provide backup to relay R 2 if relay R 2 fails because of some reason. And similarly, in case 2 we need to calculate let us say by considering primary relay as relay R 6, then out of 8 relays which relays will provide backup to this relay R 6. So, that we need to determine and we will consider two separate cases case 1 and case 2. In case 1 we will consider relay R 2 and in case 2 we will consider relay R 6 and then we will determine using two algorithms which we have discussed in case of uh, link rate structure we will calculate uh, the backup relays for R 2 and R 6. So, in this lecture we started our discussion with what is the link net structure and why the coordination of the overcurrent relays are required. We have discussed that if we wish to carry out coordination of overcurrent relays for a large network which contains large number of relays and distribution feeders or branches, then we have to go for or we have to use link net structure. And if we want to use link net structure, then two algorithms are there in link net structure. In first algorithm, we need to determine the three one dimensional vectors along with two parameters n a and n b. And in algorithm 2, we need to calculate a seven different parameters and based on that, we can have the value of a remote relays or backup relays for a particular primary relays. And we have discussed just the outline of one example that if we consider the 4 bus network which contains 4 branches and 8 relays and if I want to consider primary relay as relay R 2 then which relays will provide backup. So, this we have discussed in this class more related to this example how to calculate backup relays for R 2 and R 6 that we will discuss in the next class. Thank you.